Hey, and welcome to Honest Tool Reviews. I had an epiphany, and I'm going to make something work that uh, currently does not. What am I doing? I am supplying power to a shed. Shower up. The power was already here. It is currently not here because the circuit breaker inside this shed has been covered in dirt daubers. Uh, the breakers have been pulled out. The wires have been yanked out. And the wires that run out were look like they've been mauled by something as they've laid into dirt for a long time. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, that means that there is wiring in here. Hence the light bulb there. There's another one closer to this side. There's about six outlets and an on and off switch. So, what does that mean? Well, it means I can actually run power out here without starting all over. So, what can you do if you're in this situation? Well, I am at an advantage. You may not be. But the advantage is simple and it's cheap instead of paying an electrician to come out here and do this i'm doing this because as a maintenance man and an electrical understanding is up here in my brain i am going to check the plugs thoroughly carefully and slowly from the house to here as i as i try this i'm going to go through in here and check them as well i'm going to use this really neat gb GFI, it's a checker. It checks to make sure you have the, the correct wires in the right places. I have to have power to use it, so there is a caveat there. But, I have a, it is a 125 volt camper outlet attached to the back side of the, the uh, entire power box panel unit out there by the house. And because there is a camper uh plug i just went and bought a plug adapter for that that goes straight to 110 from that i went ahead and checked it these two lights came on which according to its cheat sheet here the two lights on the well you, you might be viewing this as the right hand side i'm viewing it as the left hand side anyway it says it's correct that means that they wired it correctly and i don't need to fear that outlet the outlet also only pertains to the uh, amount that I can use. It wasn't like 240 or 440 or three leg or anything weird. It was just regular uh, power supply outlet electricity. Um, I say that that way for all of us who don't fluidly speak electrical. I'm not a licensed electrician and this is a temporary power source it's not to be used every single day it's not to be kept running 24 7 it is just a genuine i want a fan out here in my shop i want my lights out here in my shop and i want to charge drill batteries every so often so with that statement in mind here we go so <clears throat> i have the outlet i have the adapter it has power and it's correct what i felt that i needed to be further was i needed a hundred foot of extension cable has a lifetime warranty, expensive as shit, and heavy duty. Because I don't want to take a chance at there being too much electricity and getting hot or something. Things get damaged. I just don't want to risk those types of situations considering the fact that I, I rent this place. So I want to leave no footprint behind. And this is easy to remove if we ever have to leave. And... Because of the rating on it, it's very unlikely for it to burn in half and start a fire. And that's not all that I have, though. I think it's in my pocket. Also, where the wires that are in the panel in here are, they immediately run to a light switch slash outlet unit and then disperse to the lights and the wall outlets. Since there is no breakers in there, there's just these three wires that come down into the panel that feed into all of this. Uh, just the one set of three wires. I'm going to be wiring them to a male outlet. It doesn't identify as male, it is male. And it's a slightly higher quality one because again I'm not leaving 
I'm not leaving anything to chance here. I don't want things to just be low quality and suck. So I have more than enough here to wire in the electricity. If we ever have to leave, it's basically six screws. It's one screw on each wire and then one screw in each area here to secure this together. That's like six screws and we could be on our way with no one to complain about anything that we've done. So with that said, I want to move a little forward instead of just standing here and bothering you. So let's start moving forward. I am using some electrical screwdrivers because this is an electrical situation and even though there's no power in my hand it's better if I just keep the mindset to use the correct type of tools so we're going to do so we're going to use the correct type of tools for the entire process now look at that that's got a got a ground a hot and a neutral or negative some people call it negative the AC goes like this so they basically change back and forth but that's irregardless of the situation let's bring it over here once I've had power in here and I'm able to work in here an extensive amount of time at the time I can make my shed look better but in the meantime it's going to be an ugly mess so I do I do deeply apologize but I can't apologize but so much I mean it's just it's not worth the headache at the moment to really really feel all that worried it's fine um, but I don't intend to keep my uh, shed like this so don't don't look at it and think I'm an absolute slob I'm just in the process <clears throat> I'm one of those people that I actually care what people think about me to a tiny degree and uh, I don't like the way the shed looks. I'm not crazy about putting it on a YouTube video, but here I am because I need to be uploading videos to keep you entertained, to keep you enthused, and teach you to be safe. Now, there is no power here. I know for a fact there's no power here. There's a cable running out of this wall that would be receiving power, but it looks like a dog has chewed the shit out of it. So I haven't used a multimeter on it since yesterday, because the power, it's, it's, it's not a Tesla coil. It's not coming out of the air. I'm confident. But I have actually spent six weeks looking at this once or twice a day in between everything else that I do. Staring at it, testing it, looking at it, trying to identify the wires, trying to figure out why they installed it this way. And I come to the conclusion an actual electrician did make this that it was to the code that it should have been at the time but with the dirt daubers leaving the dirt all over this I mean I don't know if you can see all the dirt that's in here it's, it's just a mess in that thing there's there's no power of any kind it's been thoroughly checked and uh, so when you see me just poking away Try to understand that the only power that's currently supplied right now is at the box where the adapter for the camper plug has been put in. And right now, I just need the electrical wires that are in this box to not be in this box. Here they are. And we are going to do something slightly better. Instead of just wiring it directly in, we're going to actually do the right thing. We're going to wire it directly in shorter without all the extra wire hanging out and being so ugly and nasty. Okay? So we're going to do this. <clears throat> Might be time for some new dikes. Oh, am I not allowed to say that word anymore? Oh well, on my channel, I'm going to say dykes. That's what these are. These are dykes. Can't be offensive. Can't be. This is a tool. Alright. Um, now, this is a four-wire system. But I'm willing to bet 
that if we double check everything, we will see certain wires that are not being used, exclusively not being used. So before we go too far, let's make sure that we check everything. I'm going to continue to strip this down a little bit to get to the wire that we need, but uh, I can't stress enough that we are most definitely going to double check because it has been a few days since I pulled this off. And although I know there's no power here, nobody's ran out here in the middle of the night and plugged anything in that has power going to it, nobody would be that helpful. So, all right, I have some wire and I have some colors. This one's white, this one's black, this one is red, and this one seems to be just a bare wire, which you would consider ground. White is typically hot. Black is typically negative. Um, I, don't, I don't really know why there's a red wire and a white wire. I assume that those two are the hot wires. The black one is a negative, and then the green is a secondary ground. But um, you know what they say about making assumptions. So. We're going to check this and see what's being used and where it's being used on these outlets. Because the outlets basically tell me where the wires are and where I should put them. I'm going to need a smaller flathead screwdriver. I'm going to have to make this hole bigger in my display unit right here. I almost did it. I almost grabbed the right size screwdriver in the wrong type. But once again, electrical screwdriver, because at some point I will be dealing with live electricity and I don't want to grab something bad because I've made a terrible assumption. So let's now look at what is supplied to the outlets. This is the way of deciding what wires go to what part of this plug. Now, they only have three wires running to everything because the three wires that run into the shop, only three into the shop, were functioning at some point. So I know for a fact the four wires can't be used. <clears throat> Let's figure out what they are for the sake of being practical. Okay. Now they did wire this, uh, I'm not sure if the word is in parallel or in series, but the two lights are here and they both get. And then here, it seems that the bare wire is in fact the green. And then on this side, there is two spots that are black, but only one is black. So I'm not sure why, but it looks like the red one is not being used. It's just curled up back there, which is fine with me, but I want to make sure that I do this correctly. So since the white wire seems to be feeding multiple units at the same time, I'm going to say the white wire is hot, the black wire is negative, then the, the, um, the clear wire, the, the non-shielded wire is um, ground. Okay. While I'm decimating the ability to sound intelligent over here. I, uh, I just want to say that I promise I, I am actually a maintenance mechanic. I just don't have very good verbal usage of my mouth. A lot of times I get to say things and I just stumble across my words. I do need a better stripper. I don't have a better stripper. I could try the um, really risky approach but so many so many electricians would do this so 
Let's give this a shot. Just very carefully, not even apply any pressure. They're nice and dull because they're old, but that just means I can use repetitive force and not pressure. Okay, let's try to pull these off. Just casually pinching a little bit. There we go. I'll just need to get them off though. A little more pressure. Okay. Once again. And again. Okay, and it came off nice and gentle. Um, anytime you cut something that way, you should always take a look to make sure you didn't damage anything. That's uh, just something you should do for safety. I highly encourage it. Okay, does not look like I've damaged anything. And I checked, so I'm, I'm good. Um, next is trying to get these all to fit in this hole. They do. Now, I can splice the wires back. I do not need red. I repeat, I do not need red. So I'm gonna cut it short. It's not plugged in anywhere, and this is the receptacle that's going to be receiving power. So it sitting there is not gonna hurt anything. I can't remove it from the wire, but now it's not there in the way. All right. Next up, actual wire strippers. I did have some, as you can see now. Okay. I have to do the same twist and pull. This doesn't actually have any decent coverage. It's just got this cardboard wrap around it. So we're gonna make sure it still has a decent amount of cardboard wrap around it. I'm gonna twist and pull. Okay. <coughs> Now, I most definitely said that the green was the ground, which uh, turned out to be the bare wire. So we're going to put that one on first. That way we remember that it is the, the wire. I'm gonna get a pair of pliers and form a hook for that one. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just put a little, a little hooky hook on there. If I had... Okay, I see it. As long as I can see it, I can get it later. Okay, it looks as if that isn't going to be able to go in as a hook so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to very carefully snip it shorter because i made these this length for the use of the hooking format not going to be able to do that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run this into the little bracket that they have i knew the bracket was there but was hoping to wrap a hook hook through it for a little bit more security which can't, it's okay. It's not gonna kill anything. Oh. All right. Now black and white, because this is alternating current, can go either way. So, unless there is something super finicky, I really don't have to focus too terribly bad on which one is which. But I am going to use the same colored uh, uh, bolts on here as what's here. Okay, so the white wire seems to be on the rather clear, um, regular looking screw. And the uh, black wire seems to be on one that's just slightly gold looking. So uh, whatever color that's supposed to be. They're the same colors matching 
the setup in the building. Okay, so with that, I can confidently say that I'm putting these wires exactly where the other wires have been. I probably should say this for the sake of somebody out there cringing, going, oh my god, he hasn't checked every receptacle in there. Well, they used actual parts to build this that you would pick up as a contractor. So I have faith that they know what they were doing. It wasn't like some meth head that needed power out here to do meth because the building's still standing. Okay. So I kind of trust a little bit, even though I've looked at the power box, the circuits, the breaker, the, the one outlet here. I have faith that everything is good and I did walk through and visually inspect all of the electrical wiring. I didn't pull anything off to look at how they wired it, except this a few times. But all of the wiring is semi-exposed. I mean, it's in its enclosure, but it's not, you know, it's not protected behind the wall. So I know that nothing has been damaged or nicked over the years through visual inspection. And with that visual inspection, I can conclude that everything will be all right. Unless I've horribly messed up something. And let's be honest, if you're seeing this, I didn't fuck up. Because I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put it on the internet anyway, knowing that it was that horribly wrong. We all make mistakes, but I'm probably going to experience a mistake before I've uploaded this. Let's just see how it works out. Okay. Okay, so the, the only difficult thing in all of running electrical plugs is that sometimes these outlets, you yeah, can't quite line up the screw with their hole, which is amazing because there's like only one way to put a plug together. It's like either it goes, either the screws go in or they don't. They're just like, no. But uh, as you can see now, I've I've gotten it to fit. Now the screws are going in. This is quite literally probably the single hardest part of this job. So instead of running out and paying an electrician to put electricity in here and him charging for a consultation, guesstimating the price of parts, adding 10 to 30% on the price of parts, uh, going to get them and then thusly charging me two trip charges and him casually taking his time to dig up the trench where the wire is to replace the wires because he won't be willing to use the same wires yada 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 i'd be looking at 500 to 800 dollars to put power out here and he'd probably try to sell me on a new power box with new circuit breakers and mess and i don't need all of that somebody out there that's watching is is super antsy to comment I don't need all that ha 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 and that's okay they can laugh they can laugh all they want doesn't matter not everything always has to be brand new not everything always has to be certified not everything always needs a license gonna very very casually install the clamp that secures the wires to where they're at because we want this to not come apart ever okay now when I say I'm a maintenance man and then still talk as if I'm a bit shy or nervous about this it's because there's a difference between three-phase electricity in a factory going to DC converted motors and residential electrical. And it's not something that I care to get into, but I do want to very carefully explain, though, that there is a difference, and that difference is big enough that if you, if you do mess up, electricity is dangerous. It has been dangerous for a long time, and it will 
typically always be dangerous unless it's the absence of electricity, in which case it becomes dangerous only when you're checking and trying to fix it. If you leave it where it's at, it's probably not dangerous, but it still doesn't hurt to call a real certified genuine electrician if you have any problems or issues. Don't just start working on something because you saw a YouTube video like this one. Take a whole bunch of time to consider everything that needs to be done and understand what's going on before you make the decision that you are able to do the job. Now, if you're a certified electrician, and you've been doing it for 30 years and something happens in your house <laughs> you probably instinctively already know about what you need to do without even hearing me say so but if you're not you're the person that i'm telling you know just take this slow be careful i don't condone anyone doing electrical work unless they know what they're doing and you're going to hear that said by anyone and everyone who does electrical on the internet because they don't want to be sued we don't want to be involved in your oopsie um quite frankly i am not responsible for anything that happens because i can't control what you're doing i don't know what you're doing and i don't know if you are up to the task but i have faith in me and if i fuck up it's on me that's why I have to tread carefully the way I'm talking. <clears throat> okay. Now, for the big finale, I'm going to put away my pliers in the turning drawer. I'm going to put away the electrical things in the electrical drawer. I'm going to put the electrical screwdrivers back up here where they can sit for probably another 10 years before I need them and we are going to take a chance on the electrical we're gonna see what happens <clears throat> okay. now to do this right I'm going to go ahead and just sit you down because you're gonna overheat you're in a Google pixel phone you can see me running the cord over here to give this a shot silly me i forgot the actual cable Oh, dear Lord. Okay. Well, we're going to try this again.
Now, thankfully, thankfully, I know that this is just a test phase and I would want to buy a extremely heavy cable later, but I am running short on this 100 foot, $150 extension cord. So I'm gonna grab a different extension cord just to get it in here to test everything. And then in a couple of days, when I have more money, I will spend a little bit extra and have a super high quality set of cables. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I said this costed less earlier. It's probably because I was concerned my girlfriend might be uh, watching the video. But this is a uh, rather expensive cable. And I believe my heart would sink if somebody ever ran across it with a lawnmower. So David, when you come over, be careful. Um, but my plan is to only unroll it when I need to use it. And uh, I'm actually planning to take the water uh, reel over there and reel the electrical in and out to the shed instead of trying to keep everything uh, just running on the floor. It is in fact temporary, so there's that. We have more heavy duty cables, they're just not as long. So we're gonna take these out. We're gonna let the dogs out too while we're at it. Yay! Come on boys. Come on. There you go. There y'all go. Okay. So let's uh let's go ahead and finish seeing if this will work appropriately and then in the next day or two I can go ahead and get another 100 foot heavy duty construction grade cable that will finish the distance off and that'll be that'll be it actually should probably just go with the 200 foot cable and then take this one back to Lowe's I will contemplate which direction to go very carefully after this video is over with but at the moment the important thing is before I spend any more money I do want to make sure that this works this is the exact same brand exact same style as the extension cord that I have it's the same size it's just not the same length so I know this is a heavy-duty high quality construction grade one um, so we're gonna we're gonna find out if uh, this wiring will work okay i'm just coming up super short here Um, not planning to use this orange cable because it's not the same. I'm not familiar with this orange cable. I've used the orange cable. It is my orange cable. And it is long enough to fill this gap. But um, I want to stay with the heavier duty cable the rest of the way if possible. So we're just going to go ahead and take all the rest of this cable. Here's to seeing what happens. If I catch on fire, we'll know it. One more time, let's check the end of this extension cable just in case wires got crossed from one to the other. Ground open. Yes, the ground is open. I have one that does not have a ground wire uh, plug piece. It's been broken off for reasons. We're gonna try this anyway, just see what happens. Okay, no fire, no fire as of yet. No 
don't smell anything. This suggests that I have the hot correct, the negative correct, and the ground correct in the plug. So let's see, I'm running the wire here, running it to the plug that would have gone in the box. And this suggests they're both lit. It's just kind of hard to see that it is lit. And it says correct. I know that it's lit because that's how it looks. And now that's how it looks. The bulb is just dying. Okay. So for safety, because there's people on the internet that just always doubt anything anyone does ever. Here's another outlet. Let's check that one as well. It would appear it doesn't have any power. So let's see. Let's see if the switch, and it does. The switch seems to be giving power here. It says that the ground is open. Now it's interesting that one has the ground and the other one doesn't when the entire supply doesn't have ground. But let's see if that's, okay. That seems to be pretty uh, consistent. These bulbs are most likely bad. That one is bad. Okay. But let me do let me do the other electrical thing to prove that there is power being supplied to things. Good old Milwaukee electrical pin that was viewed in one of my first videos. There is power. Okay. Yep, this one's broken too. I don't know if they just immediately shattered because I wired something wrong. <laughs> or... Is it off? Okay. If it's just because they've been in here for a century. I'm going to leave the power on. I'm going to run into the house, grab a light bulb, install the light bulb. And if the light bulb lights, that can be the end of this video. If it doesn't... I'm probably not going to upload just yet till I figure out what's wrong. But my phone's getting hot and I'm probably running out of storage space again. So hopefully that can be the end of it. Because uh, I know there's plenty of people out there that really just do not want to deal with having to pay an electrician if they have the mental capacity to do something like this. And I want to show that it's possible. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm showing you that it's possible. Earlier in the year, okay, yep, there's a light bulb right there, could be broken, looks terrible, but still, still right here, and it's a little sticky, I don't know what that's about, I think there's another light bulb, hmm, there was another light bulb. I took it out because there was too many in one location. If I can't figure out what I did with it. I don't want to cut the video. That will require my computer. My computers are throwing a bitch fit right now. So, uh, apolog I apologize. You might just want to skip a little bit of this. Into the old workshop we go. Um. Well, we'll try what we got.
gonna be no way of knowing at that point, but we'll try what we've got. Can't imagine where the other light bulb went though. It wasn't bad. Oh wait. I know where it was gonna be. There's a bunch of these light bulbs over here. So we're gonna try these. And I'm gonna take this one too, but there's a number of light bulbs. You okay, hero? Okay. He's the hero. You little man. We'll be right back, Baymax. He could get off the leash if he'd stop running away. We feed him great, play with him, we take him on walks. He's just so worried about everybody else and everybody else's property. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. Bad bulbs, which you can probably hear rattle. This iffy halogen bulb that has no business being out here because it's probably bought a load. Should be thrown away, but maybe not. We'll see. I don't know. Didn't work. Let's try another one. a real light bulb. There we go. In case you can't see it, I'll close the door. Okay, outer end hero. There is power in my shed. This is the one that was going out inside the house. The going out thing was what was bothering me. I think it has a bad capacitor or something. This is another light bulb. And it works. Because it's, in fact, a bad bulb. Okay. So, I have three bad light bulbs. I will deal with them. But, I have successfully shown how to put power in your shop shed. And as a test, a casual shed test, everyone's wondering, gotta be wondering, well, how much can you pull off of it? Well, we'll see. If it's supplying power to a camper, it should pull enough for what little bit that I do. I just intend to char charge some batteries out here. Okay. Now you did see the lights flicker, that's true. And even though they're low wattage bulbs, they flicker, that's true. However, I don't intend to run a grinder. And in fact, within the next 10 minutes or so, this is gonna be unplugged because it's a temporary. And I'm going to build a shelf to put all of my tool chargers on it. And then I will plug this in when I need to charge batteries. Other than that, it is not going to be used for much of anything. I hope you've learned something today. And in case you're wondering, although this isn't a tool review of this really old tool with no brand that I can recognize, I do highly want to say that this has been an extremely helpful tool for me and that I am probably going to buy a new one of a different brand. That way I don't have to worry about this bulb going out because clearly it is dying. It's getting harder to see. But these things work. They are really nice. There's a reset button to reset the connection. If you're wiring over here and testing, 
which I don't suggest, but you can. Electricians are confident bastards. Um, I call it a 110 outlet checker. Um, and typically, you know, I, I call this a, uh, a power wand. Giggity. And uh, I, I do highly suggest these for residential stuff. And uh, with that, the phone is getting extremely hot. It's, it's hot and humid today. I'm going to turn on a battery-powered fan. And I'm going to wish y'all a great, happy, healthy, safe day out there.